This episode is brought to you by Blue Door Financial. Blue Door Financial will help you save money and reduce taxes to live a fuller financial life. To learn more, visit Blue Door Financial online at bludoorfinancial.com. That's bludoorfinancial.com. Hi, I'm Bill Corcoran Jr. and I'm your host for the On The Stacks podcast. Today, I'm chatting with Chris Hacken, founder and CEO of Loop Internet. What's up, podcast episode 96 of the On The Stacks podcast in the Blue Door studio. Welcome to the show, Chris. How are you? I'm great. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, finally. Man. Yeah, we finally connected. This I, I don't know how long in the making, but you and I have been going like back and forth for, I don't know, probably months. Probably It's probably at least two, three months. Yep. Right. And uh, coincidentally, you're running some some fiber lines right outside of the studio here, with uh, which, is, which is cool. It's been uh, interesting couple past weeks with the between the weather and uh maintenance issues we'll call them yeah um but yeah yeah so we're gonna or we'll, we'll talk a little bit about or a lot about um your, your company loop internet um which is um super cool and i think um you know I, I just i really like i really like what you're doing and you're doing something that nobody else is doing anywhere locally probably regionally or who knows maybe even nationally but i'll, I'll let you talk about that in a little bit um, but before we before we do, I want to kind of uh, learn a little bit more about you, kind of how you got into this. But take me back to uh, be- before the days of Loop Internet. Jeez, uh, I had to go back to uh, I was like fifteen. I uh, think it's before that. Probably like ten years old is when I first got into like computers and stuff. Yeah, I don't. Do what, you did re- you, what did you start with? Like, do you what know? You doing? Do you know what Neopets is? I think so. I don't know. Refresh my memory. It's, it's like an online game. It's 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 terrible now. But back back in like the infancy of the internet. It's uh, you know like those handheld digi pet thingies. Yeah, that you like have? you just like build like a little pet, like a digital. Yeah, pet. but it's that, but like online. So like, but it was like a huge ecosystem built around it. So you can like battle pets, and um, so I was into like the store portion of it. So you can you can create like a store and sell like items. That, it's hard to explain without like using it, but there's like games that you can play. Like I said, there's so many different aspects to it, but the gist of it is like you train, you can train a pet, battle your pet play games and stuff like that so anyway um a part of the game is you know you can own a store so so you own the store so i i, I built a store so you can there's like it, you, you can go from a, like a size one which is like you have space to sell five items i think it was and it, it goes up in five item increments so i was at like a thousand which is like really really high because you're because you're the cost to double your, your the cost doubles every time you upgrade your store so it might cost like five five virtual dollars at level one, but by the time you get to like a thousand, I don't know what that is, like a couple million million dollar or dollars um, once you get up there. So, so you were ten years old, ten years old playing Doing Neopets, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so as a part of the store, you can like design your storefront. So they used like HTML and all that internet website stuff, inter- internet stuff. Um, it's gotten a lot more complicated in the past like 20 years or however long it's been. Yeah, it has been 20, 21 years. That's crazy. But yeah, it was basically, I started coding websites and stuff like that by designing my Neopet store. Um, and you just learned all this like on your own? Yeah. I mean, I would come home from school and just look up how to code stuff. I don't know. Obviously it was very, very basic in the beginning, like learning how to change the color of text and stuff like that. But, um, what year was this? Uh, was, you said uh, this 20 years ago? Yeah. I was, 2000 yeah yeah it's crazy to think about it now but yeah so yeah it went from like changing color of text to like uh you could eventually like i would basically steal people's stores and like y- you can view the source code of a website so i would like view the source code of someone else's store that had really cool stuff on it and like dissect it and then change it to make it my own which is basically how like most people even today will still like try to figure out how to code certain things like you can go on google's website and it's gotten a lot more complicated, but you can basically recreate their entire, the UI at least, um, just from looking at the source code of the HTML. Um, did you actually like make money off this or it was just no, like it was for just, fun? Just it was fun. just like virtual. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I like, mean, but you learned, but you learned a lot about I spent like, like years on this. Game. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So, so it goes further. Yeah. So I probably stopped playing when I was like 13. Ironically, I sold it 
for, for, like, for virtual dollars for no for real dollars oh really it was like so you did make money off it then. it was like a hundred dollars but when okay. i was when i was 13 that was like a lot of money okay and so i sold it to 100 for 100 bucks to who and then i i don't know some guy online i don't okay. remember okay um but uh so i used that money to like buy web hosting for like an actual website which remember. was probably much more expensive back then than it is now uh, right or was it i don't know i don't know i don't remember it yeah. was like a hundred dollars for like a year but okay. that was for like super cheap, basic website cheap, super basic like cheap in the early 2000s yeah so yeah so then you what you built this then you started your own website what was it I, I'm, I'm trying to remember i don't <laughs> so it was probably something ridiculous oh so i would uh I was, we were all into video games back in the day, so there's like you know like Grand Theft Auto cheat codes and stuff like that. So like w- one of the biggest like websites at at that time was like cheat codes websites. So I would just like rip off all the cheat codes from other websites and put them on my own, and it, it was crazy how much traffic it got. Like I would I was getting like a thousand hit back then. That was, this was a lot for me, a thousand visits a day. Yeah, it's um, a lot. Yeah, I mean, Google's making like millions or by now billions of a day probably, but um. You know, for me as a 13 year old, I was like, holy crap, a thousand people are using my website a day. And I was just like, literally spent 10 hours a day scraping other websites, cheat codes, and putting on them on my own. So I didn't really go anywhere. I think I just like gave up eventually. I was like, it was just fun. Took, yeah, yeah. Just took it not fine. But yeah. So I'm trying to think of where that led to after that. But so you've always just had like this, this, this skill, knowledge, and passion for like computers, building websites, just stuff on the internet. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of like what my next little project was. I think I just kept trying to build things. Uh, like I built like a uh, like a, a web admin forum. You know, like a web forum is. Like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I can't remember what the big names are, but just like a a chat uh, platform. Um, so I built one for like web developers. Like, or I don't remember what it was for. It was called Web Talk Forum or something stupid like that. But, um, just for other web developer people to come on and yeah, just but, exchange information. And to get traffic, I, this is probably like, I would like fake having contest. <laughs> so I would like, I would like spam uh, like GameStop, GameStop's uh, like forum and be like, hey, we're giving away, you know, a free video game. Come, you have to post a hundred times on my web forum. <laughs> um, I, th- I did give it away one time, but like, I was just like trying to get people to come use my website. That was like a, adolescent way of you know scamming people to, <laughs> to for views i don't remember i, I sold that one for a thousand dollars though i was moving oh, okay. up in the world <laughs> yeah wow T- 10 times the money <laughs> where did i lead i don't like i'm trying to think of how i got into like internet stuff should i go into high school i guess we, yeah so in high school i mean i we didn't really have like programming courses but like we did have this well we did we had like a did you go to crosswood no oh um, i went to hanover no, in Crestwood we had uh I think we were only the, one of the only schools in this area to have it, but we had like a a programming like an intro to programming course. We would do that, but like I would go home and learn after I'm trying to get to the gist of the story here, I guess. Um so like I was brought on we had like a um Bloomsburg had a uh like a coding competition, if you want to call it that where like um you know the top coders from every school go and compete against for these things so there's schools from like philly there who they have like years of programming courses and we went when with, with like with like nothing with like a quarter of a semester uh, and uh basically we got destroyed like we didn't i didn't i didn't provide any knowledge whatsoever but um my one friend at the time alex shovelin he was like good whiz uh he got one of the problems, I think. And then, I mean, we ended up being like last place, but it just really opened my eyes to like what's going on in the world with like how, how crazy some of these problems can get. Um, so that was like, I guess my eye opener into programming and how to like do some really cool stuff with it. Um, and then, and then at what point, like in high school, like, did you decide like, like, so you obviously ended up going to college. What did you go to college for? So I went for computer science at Temple um my mom was gonna like listen to this and like <laughs> be pissed i don't know because like i <laughs> i went i went there for like a year and a half maybe two years and i eventually i just like stopped going to class and um why i just it was so boring and like i didn't learn anything like i would just sit sit in my apartment and like code 
but just, not for school. Just, yeah, <laughs> just like you were doing in high school. Yeah, pretty much. I would just yeah, like in high school I would go home and like just, go to websites or whatever. Um and my mom didn't know this either, but I would go and skip class and just go home and it, like <laughs> uh, I think I missed like sixty days of my senior year. <laughs> um So but you graduated. But yeah, I graduated obviously. Um so high school, same situation. I just kinda like stop going to class and started like working on other projects. Um, I was trying to get a job out in California to like get paid to do this. Finally, this was right after college. This was, I was still in college, but like eventually I was like, this sucks. I don't want to go to school anymore. I was like trying to find a way out where I, where my parents didn't disown me. (laughs) And, uh, so I was looking for jobs. Anyway, so I interviewed at two places in Cali. No, none of them hired me. So I ended up like running out of options. I kind of had to admit eventually that I was, wasn't was going to class to my parents. Because I think they got a... Actually, I think they got a letter that I dropped out. And like I ignored them for like a week because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so they were like calling me like nonstop. And I'm just like panicking. I'm like, oh shit. So eventually I did I did go home though. And I... Because um, my, rent, my rent was like... They were just like, you're not staying there. So you transferred home? So I, yeah, I tra- transferred home. I got a job at a data center in Scranton called BurstNet. They're actually defunct now, but um, that was like my first like real job in the industry, which is, I don't know if you know what a data center is. They just, um, it's like a giant building full of servers. Um, that And what did you do? I uh, just build servers and, and like, so I was first, like my first, six or eight months there I was on the quote unquote build team which is you really just built servers and replaced hard drives that died and stuff like that um then I got promoted to the support team from like I was on a night shift so I went from like 10 p.m to like 6 a.m it was just like miserable like you'd yeah that sucks you'd, you'd get out at six at first of all, I wasn't making any money I was this is 2008 maybe or no I don't know, 2012, around, give or take. So I was making like $13 an hour, and I don't know what that is, like 20 grand a year or something yeah, ridiculous yeah. like that. So I was just like, I don't know. Like there's there were people that there that were like 40 years old making maybe $2 more an hour to me, and I was like, like what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, so, what, not, so what did you do? Two of, my, two of my friends actually transferred to Temple from other schools. So I actually went back down there to go back to school and here's the best part i i stayed at one semester <laughs> and then i got a job with another company um called vistar media um they the, the founders are a couple of people who uh used to work for google um i think they i think before google i think they owned a company bef- and then google bought it and then they what quit and started another one um so what did you do there um, so they're, they do digital out of home advertising, which that's like the technical term. So basically they connect outdoor and indoor, I guess, um, like displays with advertisers. So, um, it's like a bidding platform. So it would automatically calculate the demand with the availability of, of, of a given display and try to find like the, um, be- the highest bid that was the highest. Almost like a Google pay per click type of thing. Yeah, pretty much. But for video display. So like if you're in in an airport or like um you know, sheets. Se- se- sheets or Seven Eleven I know has them um at like gas stations or even Seven Eleven has them inside actually which is weird but um so you can like bid on the displays in Seven Eleven to like post Pepsi ads or Coke ads or whatever you want to put on there so I I like I left long before they even launched or no I think they just launched when I left. And then I went back to King's College, actually, because my dad was the head of security there, and I got to go for free. Um, so to, is this where you finished school? I finally did finish school. Okay, um, after a couple dropouts. Yeah, so I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, because um, honestly, I just couldn't sit behind a desk anymore. It was, like, not my thing. Like, just, and I, I, honestly, I was, like, gaining weight and just, like, super unhappy with, like, being on a computer all day. You know, you wake up at, I think I caught, I lived in Philly, so I caught the train um, from North Philly down to Center City at like, I don't know, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. And I had to catch the train back home at like 
seven thirty eight p.m. So I would just go to sleep and repeat the whole process again. Um, yeah, you didn't like that. And I, no, that's that's terrible. I don't know who, why would you want to live like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So you're going to Kings. So I was trying to figure out what I want to do in my life. Um. I was initially, I was looking at the military. So I was initially going to join the uh, Air Force. I went the King so that I can go to Air Force ROTC. So I was in that for, I think it was almost two years. Um, and I was getting ready to go to, um, they call it field training after your second year. And um, so I, ironically, there was a Marine Corps recruiter at our school, like literally like a week before we were supposed to leave. Or not leave, but like the end of the semester, I think. So I talked to him and like, I always wanted to be a pilot. So, um, with the air force, you like, you kind of have to commit to joining before, like you can apply for a slot. And if you don't get the slot, you're kind of just like stuck in there anyway. <laughs> so with the Marine Corps, you can apply for a pilot slot. And if you didn't get it, you don't have to like join. So you can kind of be somewhat guaranteed. I mean, there's still other things that can disqualify you for it. Um, but so long story short, I, quit the Air Force thing and I started doing the Marine Corps thing which is way harder than I thought it was going to be because like everything you do is just like life or death like training essentially like it's just like way more physically demanding than anything else I've ever done so like I literally, I literally trained for like just working out for like two three hours a day for like three years before I went to officer candidate school for the Marine Corps and then um I mean so I don't know if you run or anything but like um, I used to. How, how fast would you run a mile? Or four, 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 four thirty, four forty in high school. Really? You're yeah. that fast? Yeah, I used to run Holy cross crap. country and track. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know how fast can you run three miles? I ran it in like seventeen, seventeen change. All right, only geez, you're fast. All right, so <laughs> a perfect score for the three mile is eighteen minutes. Um, so I got like my best score ever was like nineteen. So that was like a, um, I think it was like a ninety three out of a hundred or something like that. Um, By the way, I don't run anymore. Oh, neither do I really. <laughs> Although uh, surprisingly, I I ran like a month ago and I was like, holy crap, I can still kind of run close to this. It was within my range of uh, my fastest time. But also, I, I mean, I lost 30 pounds of muscle, so it probably helped a little bit. But so like any other factors are like either do 100 or not 100, uh, 20 pull-ups and 100 crunches. I think they changed that now though. It's like, it's like they're all about safety now and stuff. So they make you do like... Uh, um, planks and like other weird stuff. But anyway, I, f- I completely forget what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're going down the Marine path and then what? Um, all right. So yeah, I went to officer candidate school. It's a 10 week program. So like I had no idea what I was in for. Um, so like the first week was just like pure hell. Like you're like, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> um, and then after like the fourth week is like when you get your first Liberty, um, it's just like whatever at that point, like you kind of enjoy getting hazed. Um, you slowly start to transition into like leadership roles and like stuff like that as you, as the weeks go on. So like the first four weeks is just like they haze you nonstop for four weeks. You get like three hours of sleep a night and that's it. Um, then after that, they start to assign, um, candidates leadership roles. So like there's like the, the platoon, Cannot platoon sergeant and like whatever other roles you know you can think of um so i think it was like the sixth week or fifth week uh we we just got off liberty and i must have like ate in some really nasty papa john's or something because i was throwing up for like a good 10 you're 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 only on liberty for like 18 hours to begin with so i was i was throwing up for like a good eight hours and i'm like oh shit like and i was put into uh which is like at the leader platoon for like I don't think it's a set time. I I can't remember. I think it was like three or... I think it was supposed to be for a week, but like they would change it on the fly kind of. I was like th- throwing up and like just felt... I had a, definitely had a fever. Um, and there's like... You can't just like quit. Like if you're sick, there's just like... They're like, suck it up. I just... That was just like a terrible experience. Like just trying to like... It, it's it's hard to explain without being there. Just like you, you're constantly like trying to... Survive. Just like... Well, and you have to like lead your... your your platoon so it's just like every hit to like take accountability all this, every so often and report to the like the one of the the um sergeant instructors you're trying to like be confident and like 
all that kind of stuff while you're being belittled by a <laughs> a, a platoon sergeant, like an actual or a, sorry, a sergeant instructor with like spitting some his face is like four inches from your face and he's like spitting in your face. <laughs> yeah. So long story short, I guess this is, that was kind of a, a pretty long story, but I was there for seven and a half or eight weeks. So like the first four weeks, I was like, I felt like I was like top 10% because it's just like all physical. It's just like get hazed and like keep going. Um, but as time goes on, like they start grading you on like leadership and um, they give you like tests on like ridiculous stuff. Like, like how your uniform is supposed to like look and all that like stupid stuff. And then, oh, the worst part ever was so land average is like the one thing that like lieutenants get bashed for on like online for like the, the joke is that like lieutenants get you lost or whatever. Um, so I had a hundred, I've got, I had gotten like a hundred percent on all my land nav test, except like you weren't allowed to, one of the rules was you weren't allowed to walk around with your compass out or you'd like fail or whatever. So I had my compass out and there's a tree in my way. So I, I took two steps to like my right or left. And I remember to get like out of the line of the tree. And one of the, one of the sergeant instructors caught me and starts, you know, screaming in my face. And then I failed that thing. So there's just like so much dumb shit like that. where like certain, I mean, that was in my control, but it's just like, like kind of ridiculous that you wouldn't like fail for that. But, um, so anyway, week, week seven or eight, I was like borderline failing two out of our three, like, grades if you want to call them that and then uh so i ended up getting sent home and i was just like well now what? i just spent like fucking four years preparing for that um now you feel like you got what start over pretty much i mean obviously i have like the my technical background and like um dude i also lost like 20 pounds i only weighed 150 pounds like when you lose 20 pounds when you're that light to begin with like i felt like an ethiopian like it was it was pretty bad so then what? So you came home and then what did you do? First I went, so I started running around my neighborhood handing out uh, flyers for like security systems. And it turns out no one wants a security system. I, uh, dude, I had a really good flyer too. It was like, I would. Were you working for someone? No. Oh, it was just, just like your own thing. Like, this is like my first, like my mom was like, take take a month and figure out what you want to do with your life. And I'll say, okay. You're like, all right, I'll do security <laughs> systems. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. So I was like, all right, I'll try this out. Um, Dan Cronauer, who we actually had on your yeah, Danny. podcast, yeah. Uh, Shout out he to was Danny. my first customer. Was he? Yeah, first and only customer. <laughs> <laughs> first and only. <laughs> so it didn't go too well. Uh, no. Right. Um, so so this failed. So yeah, like my, my my flyer was like, who else has been at your door today? Like it, I thought it was pretty good uh, fucking marketing for like a security company. Like you <laughs> want to see who's at your door? Yeah. Um, no one called. So, um. And like one of the other things I've just always been passionate about is just like internet. So like I've, I was even thinking about this before we, um, before I went to uh, you know the Marine Corps and all that other stuff. Um, I just thought it was like too big of a hurdle because you need a lot of money to like do what we're doing to really get into the internet business. Right. So, but I've I've heard of like other companies doing it wirelessly at first, and then they slowly you know transitioned into fiber. But at the time, I I, I was just winging it. So. I contacted this guy, um, Jeff Pyros, who owns the Luzerne Bank building downtown, um, to see what like what I could work out to like use his roof to start broadcasting signals across. So, so this is this is the Wolfsburg. beginning of the, the beginning, the beginning of, of the internet business. Correct. It was okay. I started as VoAB Communications with V O A B, um, which is like a terrible name because it doesn't. I don't. I just found a four letter dot com and I was like, I'm, this is this is us now. Um, or me now, I guess. But so you started this thing by yourself, right? Um, I had like two thousand dollars in my name and a lot of credit cards, so I was like, "Let's just, just, just do it." All right. So you contact the Luzerne Bank building guy. Um, yeah. So he has all. He's like, that's like the major hub for like telecom cell equipment downtown, yeah, at least. Very. Okay. Um, there's like Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T all have cell equipment on the roof. Okay. So you contacted him. What happened? Um. He was like, it's a thousand dollars a month per antenna. I was like, there's no way I can afford that. <laughs> so like, like, what were you trying to start? Like, like, so, how, like, what was it gonna? What were you thinking? Right. So, like, I didn't, I didn't really know much about how a lot of this stuff worked. So, I thought I was just gonna put up four antennas and cover the entire valley. Um, that's, but that doesn't. That's reach not that how. That, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so you had big hopes. We'll get, we'll get there. Um, yeah. 
So And this is what? This is how many years ago is this now? Uh, Five, seven? I want to say it's twenty Yeah, so I started this in twenty fifteen. Okay, I so think. seven yeah, seven years ago. It was like November. I actually started on my birthday, November November sixth, twenty fifteen. So did you Which do is, it? Did you did you get those four antennas? Well, so I was like, "There's no way I can afford that, man." Like, you gotta help me out. Yeah, here. You, you only had two thousand bucks, <laughs> right? That would last me out an entire like two months yeah. before I went broke. Um, so we ended up coming to terms on. I don't. There's. Do you ever heard of the Keystone Innovation Zone? Yeah, it's like yeah, the tax cutter program for downtown. So he's like, "Hey, if you sign up for this Keystone Innovation Zone and you get get accepted." I'll I'll rent you whatever I think it was I kind of broke the terms a little bit but I think he was like I'll I'll let you use four antennas on a roof for five hundred dollars a month and I was like okay that's much more reasonable so I went out and bought like four thousand dollars of wireless radios um so I don't know if, if you don't know any, anything about like wireless signals there are uh, licensed frequencies and unlicensed frequencies so like your Wi-Fi modem uses unlicensed frequencies. Um, so the antennas that we put up are actually the same frequencies as your Wi-Fi router. Um, they're just like a lot more powerful because their the power is higher, and also there's like no obstructions outside when you're just shooting through the air, so they go a lot further. So you can actually send a five gigahertz mile. Like the longest test is like someone tested it like a hundred miles before. I think it was like a hundred miles. It was really far. Wow. In 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 reality, like in Wilkesbury, you're lucky to get it like a mile without like severe interference so um so we put these things up and i was just like let's go to try to sell internet so i bought a a fiber connection through a company called zeo which is actually who we still have two of our circuits with basically i got hooked up with a fiber connection that cost me like way more than i can afford i'll tell you that um so we needed to like get customers like pronto or we were gonna go out of business immediately um how did you do it so I don't. I honestly don't remember how we we got my first customer. Two of them were like friends, like um, Travis Janetti. If you know, he went to Crestwood too. I think he went to Crestwood. And Tom McRadner. They were both. I think they were both Crestwood guys. Um, they both lived downtown. They were like gamers and want a faster internet. So, so they signed up. Thanks, guys. Um, they were like the start of like, wow, people actually want to pay for this. So we can this will work. So we hooked them up and like we're like, okay. The signal like actually works if you're like close, close, and at the, and at the time, so like six seven years ago, like, I mean even still today, because I, I just know a little bit about you know your your business and the internet speeds, but like your internet at that time was probably much faster than so competitors. Is that when right? we first started, Service Electric's fastest plan was fifty megabits per second. What was and, yours? And we were offering a hundred. So you were double. So we were double. What was and what, in terms of price? What was how, how did you compare? I honestly don't remember. Uh, it was clear competitive i'm sure yeah i'm pretty sure it was cheaper so you were cheaper for at for double the speed i mean we still are i mean that's yeah that's like our like why, why would anyone buy the same right yeah yeah so um so your two buddies signed up i mean we hooked them up and i didn't really know if it was gonna work or not but it, it did and then <laughs> that was like my first like i hope this works <laughs> <laughs> We got like we get, so like one of our first customers was the chamber actually, and Genetti's hotel, and also um, BCJ, which is like a architecture firm. Um, they actually like design a lot of the Apple stores and rich people. Oh yeah, homes. yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you started getting some like real customers. So they were like, yeah, real customers. They're you know paying two three hundred dollars a month or whatever, which is looking back at it, that was like cheap compared to what they were paying. Like, they, like BCJ had a fiber line through someone and they were paying like a thousand dollars a month i'm like i should have charged you way more <laughs> um they're willing to be guinea pigs i guess so i can't complain um so we were actually making like okay money like i was paying the fiber bill at least rent was another story i think i went with like six months without paying jeff a dime <laughs> <laughs> um i think we eventually we squared up somehow but um so i mean just kind of kept growing for that eventually we realized i re- well i realized that um like these signals don't go through trees or anything so like we ended up i started putting like micro pops all across the city so like we actually came to an agreement with the wixby housing authority um we gave them free internet in exchange for access to all the roofs so we have like point to point links that come from the luzerne building out to all of wixby housing authority buildings and then it branches out 
through our like our point to multi point systems from there. That's kind of like how we started to get big because that would that kind of we were able to disperse the signal a lot better and just like the the throughput was better because we can you know had mult we're basically reusing the same spectrum but in different areas of the city. The first time I realized that you know we gotta like do something different uh, if we want to keep growing was I was like okay how can we start like running actual fiber lines so like I contacted Pete now like they want like ridiculous. Like, they charge you, like, five grand just to open up a manhole to see if, like... If it's even possible. Right. I mean, same thing with Verizon. Like, they own con- Conduit all over the place, and they basically want, like, a $5,000, like, survey fee just to see what's available. They don't even know what they have. That was out of the question. Um, UGI was about to start, like, a major gas line replacement on South Franklin Street. Well, no, all of Franklin Street from, like, Union down to South Street or something like that down there. Anyway... Um, it was like three or four blocks. So I had been begging the city at this point for like two or three years to try to let me run my own conduit. And they were just like, no, <laughs> um, because who's going to let some kid start digging up the streets and just like start so destroying stuff. Yeah, so, so what were you going to do? Like piggyback off of this other, they were already going to repave the street anyway. So he's, I guess he was just like, well, we got the lose. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, how bad can you possibly make it? <laughs> um, turn, turned out pretty bad actually. But, um, so we just started, like, we had no idea what we were doing. Dan Cronauer actually helped me. Like, I borrowed some of his, he had, like, a skits here at the time and, like, a mini, like, a, like a tractor backhoe thing. So I just bought conduit. I bought a micro trencher. From, it's, like, like, a bobcat attachment. It's, like, a giant saw that's, like, four feet wide, and it goes, it'll, it's, it basically just cuts through the asphalt, and it goes 18 inches deep, which is, it's considered micro trenching. So it cuts, like, a three-inch slot. 18 inches, 18 inches deep, and then it just, like, shoots all the fill out along the trench. So, like, having no idea what we were doing, it, the first, like, 200 feet took us, like, two weeks. Like, we just had no idea what we were doing. So, we do that in, like, a day now if we want if we want to. But, um, I mean, we just learned so much about, like, what to do and what not to do. Like, the city doesn't mark any of their street lights or, like, um, traffic signals. So, we learned... Uh, Learn the hard way. Yeah. We cut through the traffic signal at Union and Franklin within like the first three days of us <laughs> using this thing. Um, technically, it was their responsibility because they didn't mark it. So they went they went and fixed it for us. But just like, I'm like, shit, he finally, they finally gave me a chance. And here I am like screwing everything, screwing up. everything up. Yeah. Same thing with like the, the uh, streetlight conduit. Like the first hole we dug. I tore it up and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> they're going to kill me. <laughs> um, and like, I didn't know what to do. So I called 911. I was like, oh, we just dug out some electric conduit. Uh, so they sent like a fire truck and shit. And like, and I'm like shitting myself. I'm like, oh God, what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> um, so you learned a lot of stuff the hard way. Yeah. Um, but now like, I, you know what to look for. Like, obviously there's, there's street light there. I know that all the conduits under the sidewalks. Um, same thing I know at every intersection there's almost guaranteed to be across there's exceptions to this rule we found out but there's across basically all four corners there's kind of we going across and we had I eventually bought my own locator too so I can like go find it myself now so we just started like trenching I have videos of it if you want to look later <laughs> but um, just Bobcat just like would just push this giant saw down the street and like every so often you have to like hand dig to find like a gas line to make sure you don't destroy it but yeah we would do a block and like a month or so like we were well we were way the first block was probably two or three months but it took, we did like three blocks so we started in june and july we didn't finish till like the end of november like we were city was starting to get a little nervous because we weren't making a whole lot of progress initially um they're like oh god like what are they what are they doing <laughs> so then you actually started making some progress figuring out how to do it more efficiently and faster and um crossing intersections Without any traffic control is probably not a good idea, but we found it out the hard way. Well, not really the hard way, just through trial and error. Yeah, I mean, so you can drive over these little trenches. They're only, like I said, they're only three inches wide. So if you go, if you time it right at the right time of day and like kind of have enough people there to manage it, you can cross an intersection without any traffic control. It's just like kind of sketchy because yeah. So this is in the infancy stages. So we were just yeah, like I said, we were just trying to figure it out. Like what really like took off for you, like. Like what was it? Was there was there a turning point that like you really this this thing like really took off for you? Like internet in general or just like 
Yeah, the company. I mean, at that point, we were doing like not a lot of money a month, but like fifteen grand a month or eighteen grand. No, probably t- probably twelve grand a month is like what your sales were. Right, but we blew like forty grand trying to do this micro trenching thing, so it was like a pretty big gamble. And it turned out like we couldn't really even like use it for the like for like a year or two because it didn't connect to anything. Like we just put vaults along the entire street and like they didn't go anywhere. Um, although King's College didn't like let us run into their building because they were finishing they were finishing up the uh, what was that building called the, the water it's, there was like a water plant or something or a steam plant or something like that over there. We have like agreements with like um, D and D Realty. They own like the Riverview West building, the PNC building, as everyone knows it as. We were at the same time running wires in the Citizens built. It's called the bank now, but Citizens Bank building. Um, so we had like a ton of stuff going on at the same time too. Like it was like a a shit show. Like there's just like, oh shit! I, I forgot to tell you. I forgot to tell you this. My first two three years of doing this, I was also working like other jobs. So you obviously like you probably weren't making money yourself, right? Like you probably weren't really taking a paycheck. No, I was. Every like so, I worked. Uh, so you were wor- you were working somewhere else, like part time or full time? Full time. So, so you had a full time job. Full two, the, I think it was like the first like at least year and a half. I had a full time job. One of them was at USPS. I was like a systems engineer. So like the mailman walk around with like those little mail scanners. Um, all those like scans go back to like a, a database that like I would process. Like I built a system that would process them and like store them or whatever. But anyway, so I was doing that at the same time, and like the first like three months, I was actually like doing work, and eventually it started to slow down, and I would like just dip out of work and go like do like install or something like that. <laughs> no, one, I'd come back and like no one knew I was even gone. Like I probably shouldn't admit that. So yeah, that's right. It's the government. It's the government, <laughs> it's the government for you, right? Um, it was yeah. Like I would just leave for like two hours and go no dig one, a trench and go. No, I didn't. It wasn't. We weren't that far yet. We yeah. were. This was like we were wiring up apartment buildings though and stuff. So it's so, like so you were all right. So you're working full time. You know. And building this business on the side. Right. So, like, right after I got out of work, I would go, like, run wires in the PNC building until, like, 2 o'clock in the morning and then go to work the next morning at, like, 7. <laughs> so, like, did you sleep at all? Not really. I mean, you do eventually, but um, five about, hours is How about now? Now I I try to. Like, during the weekends, I'll get, like, a solid 12 hours a night during the week. So, during the week, if I go to bed at, like, so we have a crew that starts, our line crew starts at, like, 6.30. So, if I don't, if I go to bed at like one, like I mean, I almost guarantee it. Every morning, I get a call at six thirty. It's like, oh, this is broken. I'm like, god damn it! <laughs> like, do I really get up again? So, I mean, sleep's an issue, but not as bad as it used to be. And just for like three years, we were just doing wireless installs. So, we eventually got like however much twelve grand worth a uh, month worth of revenue was installed, installed, and then uh. So I mean, at that point, I had like one employee, which is like a. The hardest part of starting a business is like finding the right time to transition full time. It's it's like really really difficult because you don't want to like leave your job too early and then have no money and then you go broke and the business goes down anyway. So like my full time job, I was dumping every dollar of that into. At the time, it was actually NPA. I forgot we forgot to talk about that too. We trans we changed the name from Voab to NPA Fiber, and then um, again like two years ago to loop internet because I don't know it was, it was probably three years ago because um, ironically right when we started running fiber is when I changed the name because I, I was nervous about calling us any pay fiber but not actually having any fiber so and people don't know what fiber even is to be honest so we were just just rebranded as internet so people know what internet is yeah um, so you're dumping every dollar from your your day job into this right um, so I mean like the equipment small fortune like you know generally like if you do an install it takes like between 10 and 12 months to make your money back so you can only grow so fast before you're like for your revenue to catch up um that was another hard part of getting started you just keep dumping so much money into it that eventually you're just like oh shit like can we keep doing this um so like what was your what was your plan with this whole thing so like like i guess maybe once it started i was just winging it eventually i was in too deep to stop like i had no choice so yeah, that was that's why I was working a full time job and doing installs because I hadn't had so much invested I just couldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> so at what at what point did you did you leave your job, your your day job? I think they were trying to put me on another project that I actually had to like do work for, so I couldn't just dip out in the middle of the day anymore. So I was just like, hey guys, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> 
I gotta have this company that I have to go like actually do work for. Um, that was honestly like, yeah, now that I think about it, that was like the, the tipping point is like, I couldn't do both anymore. So I had no choice. So we definitely, I definitely slowed down after I went full time just because we couldn't afford to keep growing as fast as we, I wanted to. It's so like, were you able to like afford to go full time with the, with, with the internet company? Like, leaving oh, I mean, I, I did. I just like found ways to save money. So like, instead of, I, mean, I would just like buy like cheap used equipment or something like, I just find ways to make shortcuts, which I hate doing because I don't, we should probably talk about how my house eventually, but like I, I go overboard on everything that I do. Like my initial plan was to run all of Wilkes Bear underground and like that would have been super expensive. So eventually I caved and I'm like, all right, let's, let's do aerial. I just t- started taking shortcuts with like finding cheaper materials and finding ways to like service people like off of someone else. So like we'd put a, a relay on someone else's house that would actually, a lot of times they didn't know they would, it would service someone else too. So like if that customer canceled, we were kind of screwed. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, now all that's gone now but like we were just, just trying to find ways that like people would come to us for business and i i, I couldn't say no because like we i want i was trying to grow the business i mean there wasn't like a grand plan if that's what you're asking yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like we just yeah. i just kept winging it and then eventually you know we ran that kind of underground and, and then the year after that we were like all right this micro trenching thing isn't working that well let's start trenching so we, i bought an excavator um, we got a couple like somewhat larger contracts like guard actually uh, has a, a connection through us it was worth the investment at that point to like just start going balls to the walls so yeah for, like, for, really for two years it was just like me and one other person running conduit underground like just we'd show up at 6 o'clock or 6.30 in the morning dig holes and then leave at 5 o'clock at night and then do the same thing again the next day until we ran out of money or <laughs> or uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, there were a couple of times where I had to like stop because we like we had no money. I have a problem with like trying to push us too far. Sometimes I think is I would just like expanding and then like be like oh shit we don't have any money. So so where where are you at now? I mean we're same same boat it's just like bigger. So yeah, like but like but you had you just had like it was just you and then you had one employee. Oh, how, how many employees do you have now? Yeah, so we have if you include me five. We're actually starting to grow now, so it's kind of like weird for me, but uh. Cause we went from like one to like five this because we got some financing. So we were able to like kind of grow the team a little bit, but so yeah, we hired like a lineman, a ground hand. Um, my one employee, Jesse is like, kind of does what I do, which is just like fix shit all day. Uh, <laughs> we run wires and fix shit all day. Um, and then, uh, we have like, uh, one office person, one office girl. whose dad is actually an investor. And then, uh, I just hired another office girl. That's like, because I found a lot of, big part of the problem that we're having is like people tend to call like after they get off work and it's like seven o'clock and I can't like force our one girl to stay on the phone for 12 hours a day. So, uh, like I was starting to go I, when I was done working, I would go home and start sitting by the phone and waiting for calls to come in. But like, I can't do that every, every day. It's like, it's too much. So, so like we would, we would be missing call like sales opportunities and you want to call them back and they don't, they don't pick up. So if you don't catch that first call, um, and these are people calling for like new business. Yeah, so, like, we'll go and, like, hang door flyers along the entire route that we're running fiber on right now to try to, like, get people to commit before we get there. So, you know, if we don't if we don't catch that call right when it comes in, we probably, like, miss the opportunity. I mean, there's a few people who will be persistent and, like, they're like, oh, shit, I really want this. Generally, if you don't close that, like, initial sales lead, like, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So, tell me more about the actual service, like. The speeds, uh, the, you know, yeah. how, how does it work? So compared to competitors. Yeah. So if you compare it fiber to cable in general, it's just like way faster. So how much faster? Um, there is like no limit. But so the current technology that others are providing is gigabit. So, you know, a gig down and a gig up. So a thousand down, a thousand up. Some people are doing 10 gig now, which is like 10 gig down. But if you're using certain technologies, it's not 10 gigs up. It's like one. But... We are one of the few providers that are running like dedicated strands to every single house. So we can... Yeah. What does that mean? Explain that. So... Like this yeah. is kind of what I think what separates you from, right. from your so, competitors. Well, I mean, no one else, no one even has fiber to begin with, but we took it a step forth, further and like... Yeah. Let me break it down. So... Go ahead. G-Pond is like a... It allows you to split 
one fiber and uh, you know you can go up to 128 um you really shouldn't go more than like 32 before the signal starts to get too weak so um you're basically splitting a connection one fiber into 32 until it reaches someone's house um so that basically you're sharing the bandwidth across 32 customers um it's kind of how cable works except they do it even worse that they're like one to whatever like i think they run fiber to the node now and then branches out the cable but you know in you know probably five ten years ago they were just using one coax cable to service the entire downtown and you know i'm not, I'm not that sure if, i'm not that familiar with their technology but i know that their network's like way overloaded for what it yeah for what it's supposed to be doing. right yeah yeah um so, right, so, you're running so these we're running dedicated lines. lines. Yeah. So we can theoretically do like a terabit per second to every house. Like, so like, like th- for the people that don't understand, that's like a hundred thousand megabits per second. I think it's more than that. Yeah. But like, 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 let's just say, for example, it's 20 times faster than what the average person has. Like, give me, give me an example. Like, just so I people can, like, you know, you don't have to do like the math backwards, but like, um, you know, is it, like, is it 20 times faster? Is it 50 times faster? Is a hundred times faster? All right. So a hundred. I think your website says like 837 times faster. So that was if we're, yeah, we were using 40 gigs of the, I think I was using either 10 or 40 gigs as our calculation for that. But, um, you know, we can theoretically do faster than that. It's just like, there's no equipment that can use that. Like in your yeah. house, like there's no equipment right. to actually like. Even 40 gigs, like. There's nothing out there to there's do. Even, I mean, 10 gigs out there, but like if like if you have a Mac, uh, like, um, yeah, Mac mini, you, you can buy the 10 gig port on it but it's like an extra 200 dollars or whatever not many people think ahead to buy that the biggest like the best use case now is that like if you have like 20 devices and they all have a gig port um you might want to get 10 gigs so that they can all utilize a gig at the same time um really i think it's just like gamers that want to say they have 10 gigs it's not like it's just like, bra- actually, it's just like bragging yeah, it's rights, like bragging rights. <laughs> that's that, that's how we got started though like most of our first customers were like hardcore intense like you know gamers and like just like enthusiasts so that's like i feel like that's the market that we really try to go to and then you know word trickles down you know they i feel like those people are our li- liaisons and they like tell like this one kid's nuts about us he tells everyone about us so where where is your service available because i know it's not available everywhere in the, in the NHA so, area. so like what areas right now we're just focusing on wilkesbury uh we do have fiber downtown and scranton as well it just like doesn't branch out to like neighborhoods or anything like that. It's in, it's only in like four buildings, um, like high rise buildings with apartments in them. I never really answered your question about the speed, but that's right. it's like limitless. Like <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like way 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 faster yeah. than than. Um, so whatever. yeah, right now we're in, we're in Wilkesbury, but what's the plan? Is the, what's the expansion? So the plan? the master plan is honestly all of NEPA, and I'm hoping to go down as far as like Reading. I don't want to spill the beans quite yet, but you know we're hoping that a a deal comes through here soon that will allow us to start building all that relatively soon. Yeah, are you hinting at like a mountain mountaintop area type thing? Uh, that's 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 one of them. I mean, so yeah, we're trying to go from basically from Wilkesbury up to like Laurel Run and uh, up the mountain to mountaintop, and then and then south. Yeah, down to like Whitehaven and like Hazleton was one of the other big areas we want to hit because. They have sort like the only option they have is service electric, and like it's so easy to take their customers. Like no one, it's hard to put into words how much people hate that company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and, and I mean, for you know, f- your your pricing is way cheaper, and the internet speed is like just right. Infinite. So, so like their base plan is like fit. Well, that's the other thing. Like all these companies, they they advertise like oh, thirty nine dollars a month or whatever. Um, but it's for like the first 12 months and then it goes up like and then 10 it goes times. up to like $80 a month or whatever. And they don't include all the fees. Like, like service electric has this, I don't know what it stand like what it is. It's a $5 network access fee. What is the network access fee? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so you have no hidden fees is what you're saying. <laughs> so, I mean, they also make, they also make you rent a modem. Well, I, mean, I guess you can bring your own modem, but like that's, yeah, I think I we, ran one. We provide our, it's not really a modem. It's a fiber converter kind of thing um the only option you have with us is if you want to run a router some people most people have their own depending on like how crazy you are about what you do but so yeah our speeds are like so our lowest plan is 250 megs right now which um i think that's like that's service probably logics, like, like, like but it's probably like their not their highest it's, tier, it's like their next to highest tier yeah, i think it is um, yeah and then and then we jump right after that to like a gig so that's like their fastest tier and then we go up even for there's 
right now we off, we offered 10 gigs, but we're also soon going to offer 40, which is like extra bragging. People rights. can't like fathom how fast, like you can't fathom how you can download anything in like a second. Yeah. I need that <laughs> at my house. You can get it here. Yeah. Well, yeah, here too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I also, um, I also need it at my house like tomorrow. Yeah. We're working on it. All right. Start digging trenches. Listen, I'll come out and dig a trench with you. That's one of the other problems we have is like it's so hard to get in touch with like the people that you need to help make like, make things happen. Right, like to pull a permit and screen. Like I've tried calling their office like twenty times and you can't even get anyone on the phone to like to like do it. That's so weird. Why? I don't, it's just the government. It's the I don't know. I don't have a good re- explanation <laughs> of it. It's just even like so. PP that was really good now, which. It surprises me, but like UGI, like I've been trying to get under polls in Kingston for like four years, and this guy doesn't respond to my emails. Well, hopefully, someone that's listening knows yeah, I'm ho- UGI. Yeah, UGI. Yeah, hook me up here because he would respond like four months later and be like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, I was busy." I'm like, "It's been four months, dude." <laughs> <laughs> four months for a callback. Um, I mean, I gave up over there because Comcast moved in. So, like, we're trying to stay away from like being the third provider. Just because, I mean, you really have to have at least 30% of the market to, like, make money. Anything above that is great, but, like, 30% is, like, the minimum. So, uh, when you're the third provider, you're already, you know, we're the we're the best offering, but people don't understand that, um, like, people just, like, people are still on Verizon DSL. Yeah, that's, like, Like, garbage. we just switched our customer over on North Penn up over here that's on that was on DSL. I'm like, how, how are you using this? Like, <laughs> you probably can't even get on the internet with that. They're, I don't know what they do. Like I don't. It's like three megs or. It's a waiting. It's a waiting game. Yeah, to use know. the internet. Like we had that when I was like five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you were building those whatever those pets. Actually, were that's, that's a lie because we, we uh we had dial up until we was, that was that was my Neopets days. Your Neopets days. I yeah. had like we you're, had di- you're, you're on dial up. When then? we switched from dial up to the DSL, it was like game changer. Like I made so much more virtual money than what I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're making millions of dollars in virtual money. A lot the of pages, the, the pages on, on dial up would load like, take like 30 seconds to load a page on DSL would like take like maybe 10 seconds. So it's a little bit faster, not, not fiber speed, but like, yeah. um, you can just get so much more done with fast internet. Yeah. I mean, this is super cool, man. Like it's, 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 it's incredible what you built, like, especially like, you know, from where you started to where you're at now. And, um, I'm looking forward to signing up for the service, man. <laughs> I'm hoping to have it up there soon. I, yeah. Uh, where can our listeners connect with uh, with you guys online? So, yeah, loopinternet.com, L-O-O-P, internet.com. And then uh, if you actually live in wilkes and want to get service, uh, you can call 888-808-5667, which is actually, uh, if you spelled out, it's loop. It was, that was a hard one to get. I think I paid for that one. You know how you like, Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. So like on your website too, I think it ha- doesn't it have like. Can you type in your address to see like if your service if it's available in your area? Is that? Uh, it doesn't work. So like, I'm like a one man show here. I'm trying to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not really anymore, but like it like. Um, but someone it can. Did, I'm sure. I'm sure someone can inquire to see. Right? right. So, pretty much anywhere in North Wilkesbury has fiber. Like today, uh, we're working on South Wilkesbury soon. Um, some areas have wireless still. So I mean, if you're in the Wilkesbury area, we can probably figure something out awesome i feel like i'm in the loop now you got this sweatshirt and I'm, i am i'm I'm, <laughs> I'm totally in the loop and like i said I'm, I'm gonna dig a trench with you when you when you come up to mountaintop all right all right i gotta get you up there we'll figure it out yeah all right well after you do we're gonna have you back on for part two and uh this is yeah, man this is this is just really cool like uh like i said I, I i've been looking forward to having you come on and um you know share a little bit about your story and how you started and um, you've done a lot of different things. Yeah, and it seems like you kind of finally found something that. Uh, yeah, it's it's like uh, that works for you. Honestly, your shirt that you guys just made the uh, what was it? The the passion and obsession thing. Oh right? yeah, yeah, the hoodies. Yeah. yeah, that's like that's what it is. It's that's like that's you. It started as a passion, and I would just like I have no, just like yeah, I just can't not do it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, keep going with it, man, and uh, looking forward to seeing you grow. All right, Chris Hacken, Loop Internet, On The Stacks podcast in the Blue Door Studio. Thanks for joining me. If you'd like to learn more about the On The Stacks podcast, be sure to search the hashtag On The Stacks on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. We'll catch you next time on The Stacks.